In this video, we're ready to talk about the notation to describe this limit that we've been talking about in the previous videos in learning modulus. So we've been exploring this idea of finding area under a positive valued uh, curve. And what we noticed is that if we summed up a finite number of rectangles, we could approximate the area under that curve, but the bigger that n value, the better the approximation. And so we defined the area under that curve to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation of i equals 1 up to n, f of xi star delta x, where remember f of xi star was the height of a particular rectangle and delta x was its width. So it's the, it's the change in x values from one um, rectangle to the next. And we defined this on a particular interval a to b. Well, this limit, which comes up a lot and will be with us from now on, is so special that we give it a particular notation. And so this is a notation we use to describe this limit. And we read it as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This f of x is called the integrand. And a and b are called your limits of integration. All right, and the whole piece is your integral. Okay? <clears throat> now, it is very tempting to think that this right here represents the area under the curve. And that would be natural since that's how we developed this idea. But this limit right here, although defines the area under the curve of a positive valued function, will have more meaning if our function f is not always positive valued. So let's say we looked at uh, something that looked like this, a curve where we went up and then maybe we came down and maybe back up again. All right, and so let's say that a is gonna be at zero and b is some value out here. Well, we could approximate, certainly from here to here, the area under the curve exactly as we did here with creating our rectangles and, s and the number of those rectangles will send off towards infinity. But what happens on this piece right here? Well, if I have a rectangle, let's just draw this one right here. This right here is still my delta x, which is positive, but the height of my rectangle, f of x i star, is a negative value, right? So this product, delta x times f of x i star, is a negative amount. And as a matter of fact, all the rectangles here are going to be a negative amount. And any time the function dips down into below the x-axis, those rectangles will, will produce a negative amount. Now we see that it's still it's somehow associated with area, right? This is still, the, if I ignore the sign, the value under here would be the area under this curve, I'm sorry, above this curve, between the curve and the axis, but it would have a negative sign. And so if I would add this sign, which is clearly a positive one, and this one, which is a negative one, then I would actually get a difference in those areas, right? This, perhaps maybe this is eight, and this right here is negative four. Well, if I took the integral from a to this value, c, I would add eight, and then I would take away four, and I would just have four which isn't quite the area under the curve, is it? It's the area under this curve minus the area above this curve. So you have to be very careful in defining this to be the area under the curve. That's only true if f is always positive. If it's not, then we have to think about it in a little bit of different ways. Okay. Let's now see if we can start with an integral. So here's my integral right here. Remember, this right here is my integrand, and 0 and 6 are my limits of integration, 0 being my lower limit and 6 being my upper limit. Let's see if we can evaluate this integral by thinking about it in terms of area. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to sketch my integrand, which is a line, right, that it goes through 0, negative 2, and 2, 0. And so from 0 up to 6, if I keep going to 6, that would go up to 4. Let's see if that's a nice line. I eyeballed it. And if we connect that, these dots, 
pretty good for me. Okay, then what does this integral represent? It represents this signed piece, and remember that's going to be a negative value, and this one, which is going to be a positive value. So to evaluate this, what I'm really going to be doing is finding this area and subtracting it from this area, because this integral will give me a negative piece here plus a positive piece here. So it's the difference of those areas. Okay, well, I can resort now to geometry that I know. So this distance right here is 2. Remember, this is the point 0, negative 2, and this is the point 2, 0. So this distance is 2. So the area of this triangle is base times height, 4, divided by 2, which is 2. So it is negative 2, right, because this is giving me a negative signed error uh, area. And then this distance right here is 4, as is this distance, 4. So the area of this triangle is 4 times 4, 16, divided by 2, which is 8, so plus 8. So the value of this integral is negative 2 plus 8, which equals 6, which is not the area under the curve, correct?